Hi everyone, my name is Opal Altaloon. It's really nice to meet you. I'm a 2D VTuber, and I figured out how to rig hands. So I want to teach you this so you too can rig hands for your own 2D VTuber model. This video series did take a lot of time and work for me to make, so if you do find it useful, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me on Twitch. Also, to stay up to date on my future projects, as well as when I stream, feel free to join my Discord channel as well. I'll put a link in the description below for both my Twitch page and Discord channel for your convenience. An important part to hand rigging is keeping in mind the details of the hand and the arm itself as it's moving from left to right. This also applies to whether your character has clothing or details such as scales, paw pads, scar, maybe they have cufflinks, maybe they have a bracelet, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to rig for those details and I will do so by illustrating with rather simple examples, just so you can get an idea. For my model here, you can see that I have scales on my hands, and when I turn my hand left and right, the scales and the details move with it. So I'm going to show you how to do that with your character. If you've purchased my asset, these details will be already prepared for you on the model itself. If you do not have this asset, that's completely okay. Just follow along with your own details. It's the exact same principle and concept. What I'm going to do is if you have the asset, you'll see that there's a paw pad right up available and it's not visible currently. We're going to make that visible by clicking this little circle and now it appears so there it is i'm going to start with the paw pads first currently the paw pad texture is already underneath of a deformer if you followed my previous video on this tutorial you will notice that all of the pieces related to the palm are underneath the palm hand right angle x parameter and what this allows is the shape of the paw to move along with the rotation of the hand itself so this work has already been done for you if you followed along okay a little bit of a disclaimer um, so this style of hand is more humanoid rather than animalistic so when this paw will be rigged to the hand, when I show you this, when you move the fingers down, it's either going to stay behind the fingers or it's going to end up on top of the fingers. To counteract this, you can use the exact same method that I showed you in the previous video with the nails. So you see how the nails appear into view, disappear behind the finger itself? And with each finger, they reappear kind of into view, that sort of thing. So you would have to separate each singular paw pad and rig it to when the fingers itself moves. Now that'll make more sense and it'll look a lot better if you use an actual paw instead of fingers. But just for the sake of this tutorial and to give you a place to start, I'm just going to show you how to rotate things, make it appear and disappear, and you can always play around with that yourself, and just follow the exact same principle as in the previous video with the nails to the details. What I want you to do is for the paw pad here, or whatever details you're using, create a new warp deformer. You can call it whatever you want, as long as it makes sense to you. I'm going to call it paw, pad, hand, right, angle, x, create, 
excellent. So I'm going to be using this to illustrate the back and forth motion to get rid of the, uh, the, you know, how it appears when the hand is kind of facing outward versus inward. So again, if you look at my model, it's the exact same principles with my scales moving. We're just going to do the exact same thing, but with the paw pad. Click on your new deformer, create three keyforms, click on this box here. We're going to create a new keyform, make it 0.1, press OK. So bring your red dot all the way to this side. And some people, you can right click. But just to make sure, since these two keyforms are so close together, a little trick I use is I bring the red dot kind of to the right side of where the keyform is, and I just touch one of the one of the dots here, and it'll snap right onto the active keyform. Okay, so now that we're on the active keyform, make sure it's the point one. We are going to change the opacity to zero and it'll disappear from view. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the positive 180, change it to zero. And what this has done is it's made it appear and disappear from view. So it looks like it makes more sense. If you would like to refine it more, I'll show you how. So this negative 180, that looks good. It's nice and forward. But as we're bringing it to the middle, it's kind of clipping into the hand and it doesn't make sense. So click this time, uh, or bring the red dot rather, to the left hand side of this green circle. Click this dot. And what that has done is it's brought it to the key form that is zero. So this one here, not this one, this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to squish it, maybe rotate it a little bit. There we go. Let's see how that looks. So that looks like it's a little too much. That's no problem. We can fix that. Just unsquish it a bit. There we go. So it's kind of turning with the hand. And again, it's going to look a little bit silly just because these are more humanoid hands. Um, but if you're interested in how to fix the fact that it's behind your finger parts or your paw parts, what you need to do is you need to click on the actual part itself here. Make sure this is clicked. Make keyforms. And what you'll need to do is go into your inspector and slowly increase the draw order. So you can do this in intervals of 100, 10, and 1. I would suggest just doing it by positive 1. Ever so slowly, be patient. There we go, now it has appeared and it's behind the thumb piece, that's okay. But I'm just wanting to show you how to change the draw order, so when you rig it to your actual individual um, paws, then it will move correctly and show up. Okay, so for this character, it doesn't really make sense for it to have paws. This was just to kind of illustrate the example for you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the top left, press this eye, which it will turn it off, and it is gone. You can choose to keep it if you like it, but for the sake of this tutorial and for moving on with the rest of the videos, I'm just going to keep it turned off.
For the scales, it's the exact same thing as the paw pad, so I'm just going to be illustrating the exact same concept once again to a completely different looking piece just to show you how this concept can be translated to whatever piece you're using on your model. So the scales are right on the forearm. It's very similar to the ones that I have on my model that move. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I am locating the scales. Here they are. And what I'm going to do is make another warp deformer. I'm going to call it scales hand right angle X create. And there it is. So Right now, we only have the hand rigged to the hand right angle X, and nothing on the rest of the model is. That's okay. So I just want to show you that you can have pieces that are completely separate to the hand, and it will still kind of show the exact same movement of the hand turning. So click on your deformer. Click on this parameter. We're going to do three keyforms, and positive 180 is complete. This is what we want, because the scales are going to be at the back of the forearm, and when it is negative 180, I want these to disappear from view. Bring your red dot all the way to the middle, and what I'm going to do is I am going to squish it a little bit and I'm going to make it kind of go off. So this is looking really weird. I know it's it's just part of the process. Trust the process. So it's going to almost slide out of view. And I'm actually going to make this go up a little bit. And perhaps even rotate it a tad. Perfect, so I am happy with that. Now we are going to adjust the opacity just so uh, it doesn't kind of slide back onto the arm and it doesn't look like the parts itself are um, flying out of view. The first step to fixing this though is we need to take the ID of the forearm itself which is in the inspector tab. So in this case, it's art mesh uh, 65. Copy that. Very important that you copy this. Locate the actual art piece for your scales or whatever details you're using. And we're gonna paste into the clipping ID. Press enter. and it has disappeared from view. So you can kind of see that when the hand turns, it kind of gives the illusion that the scales are moving very similar to my model here. If it is kind of flying off your art, your forearm too fast for your liking, that's an easy fix. Make sure you click your deformer. And right where it's at the middle here, I know you can't see it, but it's there. Just bring it closer to the forearm and it will move a lot slower. So I am happy with that. Now let's fix the issue, the fact that 
once we bring the red dot kind of past the zero point, it slips back into view <laughs> and that doesn't make sense. That's an easy fix. Very similar to what I showed you with the paw pads, make sure you click and use the deformer itself instead of the actual art piece. You can use the art piece if you want, but I'd like to keep it on the deformer. And click this here, and I'm going to make a keyform at negative 0.1. Press OK. You can do the exact same thing that I showed you, the little trick of bringing the red dot to the very left, clicking this so it moves back onto the active keyform. Or in this little box, you can actually type the keyform you want to use. So it's already at negative 0.1, but let's say it's at 180 here. And I want to use the negative 0.1 keyform. I just type it here, negative 0.1, bam, we're ready to go. So now that we're at the negative 0.1 keyform, change the opacity to zero, bring it all the way to the left, negative 180, change the opacity to zero. And now we have completely fixed that issue. Now you've learned how to rig details based on the rotation of the hand and forearm. Again, this can apply to cufflinks, long sleeves, a scar, a bracelet, anything you like. It's the exact same principle. Make sure you use your deformers that you have to your disposal to maintain control and to stay neat and tidy.